Hi guys and welcome to the next video. So today we're going to do the second part of uh, the FANUC programming tutorial and we're going to create a new program uh, because we have much more knowledge than before. Before it was just uh, a little bit of uh, simple movements. Today we have all the if, waits uh, and sub programs calls. You also know the file types and so on. So we're going to make some advanced programming today. Ready? Let's get started. Okay, so what I wanted to show you today is I wanted to implement all of the knowledge that we have into a more advanced program. Probably it's a simple pick and play application that you can use in uh, real life. So I think it's going to be interesting. So the whole idea is we're going to pick a block, put it in the other place, and I'm going to add uh, some logical command so you can see how it will work in a re real life. I'm going to give you some tips what to do, uh, what type of logic to use and why to use it. So you know how to make the program as safe as possible. So it will prevent you from uh, doing something unintended. So uh, like opening the gripper when you don't want to and so on and so on. So we're going to uh, write some macros. We're going to make some teach pay net programs and we're going to call subroutines and use a lot of logic. So I'm sure you're going to like it. Ready? Let's do it! Alright guys and welcome to the exercises. As you can see we have a bit of a new setup uh, where you can see that we have a gripper attached to the robot, we have uh, two boxes on the table that we're going to pick and place. We will be picking from this table and placing it in here. Alright, so we have all of the knowledge, uh, so let's make some programming right now. So let's go to our uh, select option where we have all of our programs and let's create our main program. So I'm going to name it uh, main let's name it main and this is going to be our main sequence that we will run and we're going to execute the program in. Okay. So uh, what's important guys? Uh, first of all, let's add a few lines. So we're going to do edit command, insert, and let's insert about 15 lines first. Okay, uh, what's important for me always when I do programming is remarks. We didn't talk about them, but I'll show you how to put them in right now. So we're going to go to instruction. We're going to go to miscellaneous. We're going to hit enter, and we are going to add a remark in here. Uh, so that's a comment basically in a program. So it's not executing anything. You can just put in uh, whatever you want. So let's uh, put it a name. So everybody knows what's going on. And let's name it uh, main program. And let's apply to apply it. Uh, I like adding a lines as well. So we're going to add one more remark. And I'm just going to add lines in here. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing in here. Okay, so anybody that is going to open the program, he will see straight away what's going on. Uh, what will be the first line of the program? So first of all, I'm going to add the home position. So I have a home uh, position predefined uh, as a position register. So let's do it. Let's add the first point. Let's change it to a register number one because it's home for me. And we have our first point. Uh, I'm going to add a comment in here also saying uh, home position. So that's my personal thing, guys, but I highly recommend uh, using remarks whenever they are needed. So like the, for the important things. So for us, it's important that we are at the home position and we want to start our program and we know everything is fine. Now, uh, what I wanted to tell you is 
before you start your program, you might want to check if the robot is at home position and if not, not to run the program. So that's what we're going to do right now. So I'm going to add a few, uh, few lines right now. And we're going to add a check in here if the robot is in home position. And if not, we're going to uh, jump to the end of the program and just end the program with an error. So we're going to uh, insert in here a statement, a uh, uh, wait statement or if statement. Let's do if statement first. And if we are not at home position, I want to jump to label 900. Okay, so let me just show you uh, that for me, the home position is defined uh, as number, uh, oops, sorry, number nine. So if we are at home position, all good. Uh, if we are not at home position, I want to jump to level 900. So let's move out of the home position. And as you can see, we are going to lose that signal straight away. So let's go back. And what's going to happen basically? So we're going to start the program. And if you're not going to be at home position, you want to jump to label 900. So we don't have a J label 900 defined yet. So I'm going to define it in here. So let's do uh, jump label. Let's do label 900. And again, guys, I like remarks. Let's give you a, a name. So for me, label 900 is going to be an error handling. So I'm going to add a name to it saying error handling. Okay. So everybody know what's going to be our label 900. Now, uh, I always like to, in the end of the program, I like to add a label, uh, label 999. And that's always my last point of the program. Well, not always, but in uh, custom applications, that's my last line. So I know uh, that my program finished here. And if I want that, you got to remember that we never want to run the error handling uh, when we're finishing our program. So in here, we got to add jump label and jump label 999. So when we're going to write our code, it's going to be in, into this space. Whenever we run to the last line, boom, we're just going to jump to the end of the program. Now, uh, what do I want to add in the uh, error handling? So I already have a pre-programmed alarm that I want to use. And in my case, uh, it's going to be user, user alarm. Don't worry, we're going to cover the user alarm alarms later on. So I wanted to add a user alarm of number uh, 10. And uh, then I want to end my program, basically. I don't want to run anymore. So let's see what's going to happen if we run it right now. I'm going to move out of home position, OK? And let's run our program. So when we run it, we're going to immediately jump to label 900 uh, because we are not at home position. And we're going to get message robot not at home position and everything is clear. If somebody is going to reset the fault and try to run, we'll just end the program. And if he starts to running again, we are going to get to an error message. What's going to happen if we are at home position and we're going to run it? So let's move back to home position and let's run the program. We'll just jump to the end. So because we are at home position, we just continue. We will move to home position, but we are at home position, so nothing is going to happen. And we're going to jump to level 999, and our program is simply going to finish. So it's important, guys, uh, at the beginning of your main programs to always check if the robot is at home position. If not, either run a recovery sequence or uh, just make a jump to the end of the program that it's not the at the beginning, hey, move the robot home, or whatever else you want. OK, so we got the first part kind of uh, ready. What, what's next, guys? Next, I would suggest uh, that we are going to write some macros for the gripper open and close. So let's do that. Let's go back to our uh, select option here and let's create a new program. Let's name it uh, gripper 
open. Okay. Now, before I start to create anything inside that program, I want to make sure that that's a macro. Why? Because as I said in my previous videos, I'm not going to add any motion instruction in here. The only thing we're going to add is going to be the uh, logic. So we can turn off the group mask to make sure uh, we can choose it as a macro command. And we are going to have our program ready for, uh, to go. Let's change it to all so we can see our gripper macro. Okay, let's go in here. And again, guys, what I like to do first, uh, let's add a few lines. Let's insert a comment at the beginning. I know I can use copy and paste, but I just want to go one by one so you guys can see it. I'm going to add another comment in here. And it's going to be called open gripper. We can add one more line in here. Add the lines. Okay, let's delete the unused line. All right, and we can write our code in here. So what I want to do, guys, uh, I can make it in a uh, two ways. Whereas uh, one of them, we can skip the the code if we don't want to, or we want to run the macro to open the gripper. So let's do it. Uh, I do have uh, a simulation in here for the uh, robot, uh, robot gripper open and close and we're going to turn on RI number one. If the gripper is closed, we're going to turn it off when the gripper is open. So first of all, guys, uh, I will do it like this. I would add the if statement and uh, if the gripper is already open. So if uh, we have our uh, robot input number one e uh, equals to off. So right, right now the gripper is open. <clears throat> we want to jump label 999. So I wanted to jump to the end of the program because if the gripper is already open, why doing any logic at all? Uh, and just jump to the uh, beginning, right? Why not? Now, usually, because it's just a simulation, guys, you will have a separate signal, probably for gripper to be open and gripper to be closed. I don't have it right now in here, but imagine that that one is saying gripper closed, the other will say gripper open. So how I would do the logic always is I will have the negation that I don't want this one and I want the second one to be on. So I always check both signals, never one signal because in uh, like this, you are sure that your logic is ex executing like it should because maybe the gripper, the gripper is uh, stopped midway so you won't have this signal, but you won't have that one either. And then we have a problem. So imagine that the RI2 is a uh, gripper open. And basically uh, what this logic will do, it will check if the gripper is uh, not closed and it's open. If so, okay, all good, jump here. Uh, <clears throat> but we don't have the option of doing that because it's just a simulation. So I have only uh, one robot input saying that, hey, it's open uh, and close. Okay, so we already get uh, that done. So if we're already open, don't do anything, just go to the last line. But what if we are not open? So right, let's write the logic in here. Uh, so we have in here our uh, open signal. So first thing you wanna do is you wanna 
open the gripper so we're going to add uh, robot uh, output number one we want to turn it on so we want to make sure that the gripper one is uh, the robot output one is on and we're going to open our gripper now in here uh, because it's a simulation i need to add a call instruction that i already uh, created before and it's going to uh, be named peak box you don't need to do it that just for robo guide purposes so i'll be able to pick the box uh, with that program so i will simulate closing the gripper and changing the states and now uh, after we are going to open our gripper sorry the open gripper is going to be actually drop because we're going to open okay and after we open our gripper we want to make sure that our gripper is opened how do we do it so we have the signal telling us hey the gripper is uh, closed or open so after we tell it to open we want to wait for it to be open so we want our uh, robot input number one to be uh, false because we don't want it to be uh, closed right and then what i will do in here guys we need some error handling correct so what's going to happen here is we will wait forever but why wait forever if we can wait just for some time so i want to add a timeout here so whenever we wait for longer than a timeout defined value that i showed in my wait video I want to jump to level 900 and I want to do some error handling there. So I'm going to add uh, the label 900 in here and we're going to do some error handling. Uh, I already have a user alarm defined for that case. So I want to uh, do it in here as well. So I want to call a user alarm. In my case, it's going to be user alarm number two and that alarm will say hey the gripper is not open well in this case i don't want to continue because i want to uh, see that something went wrong what i really want is uh, for my program to loop once more so what's going to happen uh, after we face the alarm i'm going to jump to label number one which is going to be the big be the beginning of my program so in here i'm going to add uh, label number one and right now uh, i will do the alarm and after somebody is going to hit the reset button i'm simply going to jump back to the beginning and again check for the conditions uh, if everything goes well uh, after that line I want to jump to label number 999 so in case there is no issues I just want to jump to the end of the program and again guys because I like it I'm going to add a few remarks here like before so I'm going to do uh, error handling here uh, I'm going to add gripper open command in here. Okay. And we have our uh, open gripper program ready. So let's test it. Uh, let's run it. So if I'm going to run through it, uh, if my gripper is uh, not closed like right now i will just simply jump to the end of the program because i know that it's open already but what if the gripper is actually closed so if we run it and we want to open it okay my gripper is not closed so i need to open the gripper so i'm going to turn on uh, our robot output one to open the open the, the gripper I'm not going to go through the simulation program right now because uh, we don't have the simulation program ready and we're going to run for here again guys this is just for RoboGuide purposes you will not use it in the real program 
and in here uh, what's going to happen I will wait for that input to be off if not I want to uh, jump to level 900 so if I will run through this line and uh, I'm not going to get our uh, gripper open I'm going to get to user alarm and I will get the user alarm in here let me run it one more time uh, without this step and as you can see uh, I got my user alarm in here saying that gripper is uh, not open that user arm and I have set up uh, it's not uh, the one that will stop the robots so it's not a red fault you can change it of course so we have it in here okay great so we have our gripper open now I want to do the same but for the oh of course if everything goes well so uh, if I'm going to uh, open the gripper uh, the simulation and everything goes well you will just continue to the end of the program and you're done with opening the gripper now let's do the same for gripper close so for that I'm going to copy that program and we're just going to change the name from uh, gripper open to gripper, gripper close simply we're going to open the program before oh, let's make sure it's a macro We're going to open the program and let's change a few things. So first of all, we want to change the name of the comment to be gripper closed. Uh -huh. Sorry guys, a little bit of misspelling here. Okay, great. Uh, now of course you want to invert to invert the logic because right now I want my gripper to be closed. Now of course that's not going to be open, but that's going to be a closed gripper. And of course now we, instead of turning this uh, input on, we want to turn it off. Okay. Also, I need to change my simulation program that I'm using uh, because that's going to uh, pick the box. Again, that's for simulation only. You will not use it. Okay. And of course, I want for this to be on. And I'm going to use user alarm number one because I have it pre-programmed already. And that's going to give us a message uh, that gripper is not closed. Okay. Let's test our program. Let me run it in step once more. So if the gripper uh, is going to be closed and we run through it exactly the same because it is closed, let's, uh, we're not going to, uh, oops, excuse me, it, if it's closed, don't do anything, just simply jump to the end of the line, done. If uh, the gripper is going to be closed, it's going to be open and we run through it. We won't jump to the end of the program because we want to close the gripper. Uh, we want to close it. That's again only simulation program. And uh, we are going to wait for the signal to be on. If it won't be on, we're going to go to our error handling. We're going to pop up the message. The gripper is not closed. Uh, in this case, that's uh, alarm with a fault. And you're going to loop through it again. So this time let's make it correct. Let's turn the output on. We run through the simulation and we waited for the signal to be on. The signal is on. We're going to continue. Bam, in the end. Uh, this depends guys how you want it. It's only for simulation. Uh, so for me, if I want to close the gripper, I want this output to be off. If I want to open, I want this output to be on. But again, up to you. D depends how you have it wired up on the robot. All right. Uh, so let's do some logic. <clears throat> let's go back to our main program. 
and we have <clears throat> our home position. So what is the first thing I want to do after the home position? Well, in my case, I want to make sure that the gripper is open. How would I do it? Uh, I'm going to do instruction if and if uh, my gripper is not open, then I want to call my gripper open program. Actually, our macro. Okay, so that's our first line. Now, uh, we don't have a part present in here on the gripper, but normally uh, you want to make sure always in your open gripper open programs or gripper close, you want to wait for the part present to be on or off to make sure you won't open the gripper when the part is there. But again, it's only simulation guys, so we won't do it. Okay, uh, so let's, let's add the comment in here. Open gripper. Okay, so we have <clears throat> the first part uh, ready. So we're going to be at the home position. First thing, we want to make sure that the gripper is open because we want to go to our uh, peak. Okay, so let's insert a few lines and let's create our peak program. So we can run our peak sequence in here. So let's go back. Uh, let's create a new program. Let's call it peak. And we are inside our peak program. Again, I'm going to add a few remarks in here to make it nice. So first of all, I'm going to add a few lines. Okay, let's add some empty lines. So that's peak from table one. So we're going to pick from here. And uh, let's get ready and let's do our pick sequence. So first thing first, guys. What are the most important things at the beginning of your program? Two things, frames and payload. So first thing you wanna do is you wanna insert a, a frame in your program, so you want to do, you want to know your user frame you're going to use. Sorry guys, not this one. So for me, it's going to be user frame number, uh, I think it's going to be number two. That's the, this table. And I want to use uh, the tool frame number three, because that's my gripper, okay? And the next thing you want to do is you want to uh, insert the uh, payload inside the, the program because we need the mass. So in my case, it's going to be payload number one uh, because that's payload with an empty gripper. Okay, outstanding. So we have the beginning of our program. Now, uh, what is good, guys? When we go back to our main program, it's always nice to have a movement out of the home position so you know that robot has started uh, the movement. So those positions are usually called uh, a pounce position and you want to add it to make sure that the robot started the program, he's already out of the home position and something is going to happen. So when we have everything ready right now, uh, what I would like to do is to move just a little bit. Okay. And I would like to add a new point as a fine movement. I want to change it uh, to a joint representation. And uh, actually I want it to be position register number two. And let's save it. Okay, and that's going to be 
uh, make sure that saved as our joint okay great so we have our uh, pounce position in here let's name it pounce great so <clears throat> we have the beginning of the program and now let's go back to our uh, peak program okay so we have the beginning now what's important always guys at least for me is that you actually want to have the same point that you will call your program from so if we're going to call our peak program as a sub program in the main sequence you want to make sure that the last program in the, the last, last point in the main sequence is the same as the first point in the peak sequence so the last point that we have that we have is our pounce so you want to make sure that that point is as well our pounce position boom so we can name it pounce okay so let me show you what I mean uh, so when we go to our main program right now and after we make uh, the movements uh, we're going to call the peak program so I'm going to insert the instruction we're going to do call and call program and we want to call our peak program in here so what's important is that that position and the first position that you will enter inside the first program is going to be the same so robot won't do any movements in between so we have that ready uh, we already did check our uh, gripper of course if you want to be super safe you can add exactly the same uh, logic inside your program so we can copy that and inside of uh, our program at the beginning if you want if you want to be like super duper safe so <clears throat> in case somebody just runs uh, this program we can add exactly the same logic in here and we can open the gripper once more if needed okay so we are at the pounce position, we know everything is fine, we have our frames, we have our payload set, so let's move to the peak. I already have the program ready, so we just need to uh, make the movement. Let me just uh, make sure I'll move there. Actually guys, it's going to be user frame number one. So we want to change the user frame to number one. And we are already at our peak position <clears throat> so we're going to add a point in here we're going to add a find point and we're going to <coughs> i'm sorry uh, <coughs> we want to make sure we save it in the correct frame of course and we're going to name it uh, peak Okay, so we have the movement from the pounds to peak. Okie dokie, we need some movements in between. Now, let me show you a few things. Uh, right now, if we're going to move, I want to move up a little bit. Okay, so we are stopped uh, before the peak position. And let me tell you a few things here. So we want to add a point in here. It can be a joint. Uh, intermediate point and uh, you probably want it uh, to be for example CNT 100 however you want to add one more point 
probably a little bit lower or you can take a look at your piece move it down a little bit okay you want to add one more point in here with a very low CNT to make sure the robot will not hit anything and what's important now so the robot is going to start he's going to move from pounds through this point to this point and then to peak position it's very important guys that all of your peak and places are a linear movements because you want to move in a straight line to that peak you don't want to risk that the robot is going to make some funky movement with a joint like this and you're going to crash into the piece other thing is I highly recommend for the pick and place to be not faster than 250 millimeters per second which I consider kind of a safe movement so the robot is going to move from this point to the peak position at that speed all right so we're going to be at our peak position uh, right now so what do we want to do so when we are in the peak position we want it to be a fine movement so we want to make sure that the robot is going to stop inside that position after he stops we want to close the gripper so we're going to uh, call the program that we created the macro called gripper close okay and uh, when the gripper is closed we want to move back and get back to the pounce position uh, let me just in here do renumber that's going to change the order of the points and we want to move uh, back to point number two so we want to make point number two so this point and this point are going to be the same important we want that movement to be linear as well and we want it to be also kind of slow to make sure that we pick our piece nicely okay uh, why both of these are linear because we want to make sure that when we move from above the part to the peak position it's going to be a movement in a straight line and after we close it we want to make sure that our movement from the peak position to the, pos the position above the peak is also nice and straight I added a little bit of, of logic so we know if the, we have the part or we don't have the part uh, we're going to use our digital input 200 to say if we have the part at table 1 and 201 if we have the part in table number 2 so probably in here uh, right after the pounce position we want to make sure that we have the part on the table so we're going to insert wait we want to wait for uh, the part to be present on table number one. Let me just show you. So that's our part present at table number one and part present at table number two, which I'm really going to pick from. Uh, when we run the simulation, you will see all of the IOs, so no, wor no worries. So let's add a comment in here also okay so you want to wait that the part is in there so then we move to the peak position after we are at the peak position we're going to move a little bit up and we're going to make sure that the part is gone so we want to wait for the di 200 to be off because we don't want that part to be in there because we already picked it so in case if we drop it on our way down or we didn't pick it because of any failure we want to stop in this line so we're going to add a remark and we want to do check no part present t1 
Okay. So now we know that we don't have a part. Now we want to move uh, up to point number one. And out of there, we want to move to our pound position. And name it as pounds. Okay, and we have our peak program ready. Let's delete, delete the lines that we won't use. Okay, nice. So we have our peak program ready. Uh, as a reminder, guys, if you touch up this point, you're automatically changing this one. If you touch up this guy, you're automatically changing this one. Okay, so we have our peak. Uh, let's do the place right now. So uh, I have again the place program already done. So let's move to our uh, place position. Okay. And we can actually copy our peak program and make a place out of it. Okay, so uh, first thing, let's change the name, of course. Okay, let's change the frames. Uh, I believe we're using frame number two. Yes, correct. So you want to use your frame number two. We don't need to check uh, for the gripper to be open. Uh, because we will have the gripper closed by this point. Probably in here you would like to check uh, for the part present, but again, I don't have a part present in here uh, because I don't have the sensors on the gripper, it's just a simulation. Uh, so we want to delete that line. Okay, so we restart the pounds because we finished at pounds. Uh, then we want to wait for. Uh, part not present on that table before we drop because we don't want to drop uh, the part on the same table. So we want to wait for part not present at T2. Okay, and that's going to be this signal. So we want to wait at 201 to be not on. <coughs> so we want to drop the uh, part onto another part. And then of course we're going to move uh, again, we move a robot a little bit. You want to move probably somewhere around here. Uh, so let's touch up this point. Uh, we don't want to set a new ID because we want till this point to be the same. We want to use the frame number two because that's the one that we are using. And we have our point saved. As you can see, both of those points are saved right now. Now we want to go a little bit lower. Okie dokie. We want to touch up this point. We don't want to set a new ID and we want to save it as point number two. Okay. Uh, and our peak position, that's going to be a drop position. Of course, we want the gripper to open in this, in this uh, place. Macro, gripper open, okay. And after you open the gripper, you want to move back and you want to check if the part is on the table that we didn't take it with the gripper uh, or something else happened to the part that it's not in the place. So we want to make sure that we have the part on the table. 
and of course after that move up move to the pounce position and then we'll move home uh, let me just make sure uh, that the drop position is the actual drop position because i don't remember if i touch it up okay so i did not touch it up guys uh, let me move one more time very quickly to the place Okay, let's save the point. Okay, great, we have our uh, position saved. And again, guys, uh, the same rule apply. So we want to move right above the drop position with a small CNT and then move from that point to our drop point uh, with a uh, linear movement to make sure we go straight down we want it to be a fine movement because we want to stop so we can open the gripper. After we open the gripper, we want to go up slowly. We want to make sure that we drop the part, that the part is present in the table. And then you want to move out and continue uh, to the pounce position. That one we want to be a CNT because we don't want to stop here. We want to continue because we know we have no part. We can go to the pounce. Let me check if in our peak program that's also a CNT. No, I forgot to change it. Okay, let's ch change that point to a CNT. Okay, we have our peak, we have our place. The last thing left is to finish our main program. So we can call those sub, sub programs in there. So we have our peak. After that, Let's call our place program. Okay. And after we're done, uh, we wanna go back to our home position, but we want to make sure after we come back, we start at pounce, we wanna finish at pounce. And we want to go back to our home. Okay. And then we'll jump out of the program. All right, guys. Uh, so our program is pretty much ready, I would say. Uh, let's move to home position. So we can start it and let's run it in auto and see what's going to happen. Let me just open a triple display in here so we can see everything nicely. Let me unsimulate. Okay, uh, let's start the sequence and let's see what's going to happen right now. So I'm going to lower this and we're going to uh, run the cell in auto and see what happens. Uh, let me just lower the speed of the robot so we can actually see it moving nicely. Let's run maybe on 40. All right, ready? Let's see. So you wanna do the cycle start right now and let the robot run. So we're going to go to pick. We're going to pick our box. We're going to go to place. We're going to place it. We will wait for the part to be on. Uh, I think I left a little bit. I should leave a little bit more time for the part to be present over there. And it's all done. Or I just forgot. Okay, all good. Yes. All right. So let's run it one more time, this time a little bit slower. Okay, uh, let me slow it down to 5% so we can uh, analyze what's going on. So we're starting our program. 
at the home position. We're we'll moving to pounds. Sorry guys, I ran it too fast. I forget that it's changing the speed to 100% by itself. So it's a little bit too, uh, too fast for us to see. Okay, one more time. Uh, this time I'm going to slow it down as soon as we start. Okay, so we're running slowly. Let me unsimulate the inputs that we're not using. As you can see, we have the part present already in here because we have a part in here. Uh, we don't have a part in, in here, so we don't have a part presence in here. So we went, went through the line. We're going for the peak position. Uh, right now we are moving to the peak with a joint and right now we're going to the linear movement down making sure that uh, we won't crash into anything let me sp speed it up a little bit linear movement to a peak position we're going to close our gripper we will wait for gripper to be closed Pick. we're going to wait for the part present uh, to be off to make sure that we lift our part So we waited, uh, we knew that we have the part in, the part is gone right now, we're going to place it. So first of all, we're going to go back to the uh, pounce position, we're getting to a place, we already checked that there is no part present, we're going to go to our drop position, so we're going to move uh, right before the drop. Then we're going to go linear down to drop it, make sure it's okay. After we are at the drop position, we're going to open the gripper, drop the part in there, go up. As you can see, I have the simulation set, but it's just a little bit too fast for it to catch it. So we're going to simulate that we drop the part we're going to check to make sure that we drop the part. We did drop the part. We will go back to the pounce position through that point to pounce position and then back to home. Jump to the main sequence, move to home and jump to label 999. Pretty cool guys. All right. So that will be all uh, from a more complicated program. We used uh, if statements, we used jump labels, we, we used position registers, regular uh, points, uh, call programs, we used wait statements. So we use a lot, a lot, a lot of the logic that we've learned so far. So if you like uh, that kind of programming, uh, we're going to mo do more advanced stuff soon. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the error handling and uh, homing programs and so on. So I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed the exercise. Thanks for watching. All right. I hope you liked the video. Like always, guys, don't forget to leave your comments down below. Subscribe, give it a like, and like always, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.